All right, so today's topic is bit patterns. And uh, I had help from Mr. Bernick on creating these slides. So he did all the math stuff. I did all the computer stuff. So just for review, uh, we have this term called a bit. And now in my slides, if you look at them, if you see a word that's italicized and bold, that's a, that's a word you need to have a definition of. Okay, So that's something you should include in your notes. And so a bit is a short name for a binary digit. And bits can have one of two values. It can be off or on, one or zero, true or false. And a byte is a series of eight bits. So a kilobyte, we're talking about the next size larger, is, is uh, 1,024 bytes. And the reason why we say 1,024 is that's an even uh, multiple of 2. So it's 2 to the 10th. So it's a little bit over a thousand. So different than what you'd see in science class. Typically, kilogram or kilometer means a thousand. In computer land, it's a thousand twenty-four. Next up is uh, megabytes. So that's a thousand twenty-four kilobytes. That's about a million bytes. Gigabyte, a thousand twenty-four megabytes. So that gives you about a billion. And then I think we mentioned this yesterday, but. Um, a trillion is a terabyte, and a quadrillion is a exabyte, but we haven't got to that size yet. Now, uh, number systems that we talk about in this class are binary, decimal, and hexadecimal. Binary is in base 2, decimal is base 10, hexadecimal, base 16. When I work with computers, I usually just deal with decimal and hexadecimal. Binary is just takes too many digits to write out, uh, even small numbers. So we'll see that in a second. Okay, so here's an example of two numbers that use the same two, same three digits. You have one, 101 up on top there. And on the bottom you have 101 in base 2. And what I'm trying to show you is the differences between those two number systems. Now in base 10 we're really used to place value, like the first column on the right is the ones column. Second column is the tens column. Third column is the hundreds column. Yeah, we all know that. But you can think of those columns as two to the or ten to the zero. Anything raised to the zero power is one. That becomes your ones column. Right? Ten to the first, well that's ten, that's the tens column. And then ten squared is a hundred, so that's the hundreds column. So all we're doing when we move to base 2 is we're just changing the base. It's no longer base 10, it's base 2. So now the columns have different meanings. So the first column is the 1's column, because 2 to the 0, remember anything raised to the 0 power is a 1. So that's the 1's column, just like it is in base 10. But then the second column is kind of weird. That's the 2 to the 1st column. Well, 2 to the 1st is 2. So the zero means there's no twos in this number. And then the next column to the left is two squared. And that's four. So it seems odd. It's not one, ten, one hundred. It's one, two, four. Remember that in binary you can only have two digits. You have zero, you have one. In base ten, you have lots more digits. You have one, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine all those digits to use. But in base 2 you're limited because remember inside a computer it's all in binary. All it is is a switch. It can either be on or off. So if it's on it's a 1. If it's off it's a 0. So we're looking at counting in base 10. Does everyone know how to count in base 10? Yeah, it's pretty easy, right? Now I'm a programmer so I start counting at 0. So I say 0, add 1 to 0, and I get 1. And then uh, add 1 to 1, and I get 2. See how you count? You just add 1 to get the next number. Okay, so counting in base 10 is pretty simple. You just take the number you have, add 1 to it, and you get the next number. Ooh, tough. That's probably the easiest function in the world to write. Okay? Just add 1 to it. But notice what happened when we get to 9. Okay, you look at 9. And then we add 1 to 9, and we don't have a digit for 10. You can't just put one single symbol to represent 10. Kind of odd that in base 10 we don't have a 10. 
what we have to do is put a zero and carry the one, and we say one zero or ten. So whatever base here is, there really isn't a number to represent that or a symbol that represents that number ten. We have to use two digits. So that's when we move to the next number. Okay. So that's how you count in base ten. This seems really silly, but now we apply it to base two. So we're going to do this activity. All right. So that's how base two works. Kind of like base ten, but you're constantly carrying that digit because you only have two digits, zero and one. Okay. And so we saw the place value. The first column was one, second column was two, third column was four, fourth column was eight, fifth column was sixteen. You can keep going. Thirty-two, sixty-four, one twenty-eight, two fifty-six, five twelve, one thousand twenty-four. To see how many digits, to so write 1,024, it's not just 1,024, it's 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, or 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, and finally at the end there's a 1, okay? So it takes a lot more digits to represent a number in base 2 than it is in base 10. Base 16 is even more concise. You can represent a number in a lot less digits, okay? So that's the whole idea of place value. Now, imagine these two switches on the wall are binary digits because they kind of are okay so here's zero right nothing's on and now I'm going to flip this first switch and we see the lights go on in this one configuration in this configuration the tubes on the outside are lit but the one in the middle is not lit so that's what happened when I add one to it now I'm going to add one more so I shut this one off carry the one and now we have the middle one lit. So we had zero, we had the outside ones lit, we had the middle one lit, and then now we do this one, and we have them all lit. Okay. So with two switches, I can show four different numbers. I can show zero, one, two, and three. So there's four different light things I can do but it's numbered from 0 to 3, not 1 to 4. So I keep saying this, but basically a computer is just a bunch of switches. That's all it is. So from just that, you can build the computers on your desk to do all these amazing things just with switches. So we're going to try to understand how that is. Later on in the class, we're going to look at uh, logical circuit design, but we'll start today with just binary numbers. So what's weird in binary is when you're writing numbers in binary, you include the preceding zeros, because remember, these are switches, right? So you don't just write one. You write zero, 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 one. Okay. So assume there's four switches. See if you can figure out the pattern. Given what we what we did um, up in the front of the room. Okay. So let's see how well you do on the worksheet. I'll let you uh, work. I'll write some things on the board that might help. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's harder than it looks, so let me just describe it a little bit. Remember the place value here. This is 2 to the 0, 2 to the first, 2 squared, 2 cubed. That's the same as uh, 1, 2, 4, and 8. Okay? One two four eight. So when you have a weird number like eleven, you say, "Well, what do I need to add together to get 11? Well, I need an eight. I need a four. That's twelve. I need one more. One. So eleven would be one zero. I guess we need an eight and a two to get to ten, right? So an eight and then a two. That gives me ten. And add one more to get 11. Okay, so that's how you go about doing it. Start with the number that's closest to the number you're trying to represent. Okay, if say you want to do five, well, eight's too much for five, right? That's too much. So eight's not going to fit. What's the first number that will fit in the five? It's the four column, right? So we put one there for the four. So we got four, we need one more. Two would be too many, right? Remember, this is the twos column. So two's too big, so we put a zero. 
And then, okay, so we got 4 plus 1. That's equal to 5 in base 10. Okay? So that's one way you can do it. Or you can just remember the patterns of the digits. Remember the cards flipping over? You make that last one change every time. 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. Zero. You have the other one change every two times. So, okay, if you're stuck, then you can just rely on the patterns, right? So let me give you one more hint here then. Um, when you're going down the page, uh, you can just start with zero and go zero, one, zero, one. There's that card flipping over all the time, right? That first one. That's the ones column. For the twos column, you have two zeros and then two ones and then two zeros and then two ones and so on, right? That was that second card. We can make fours. In the fours column, we have four zeros and four ones. Eights, we have eight zeros now going on, and then eight ones. So that second way is easier. But after a while, you'll get used to the order of things. Okay, so now we know the place values of uh, these numbers. Uh, we can try to decipher what this number would be. Um, here's a number in binary, 100101. What number is that? Eh, I don't know. We're humans. We don't understand that very well. So to translate it, we have to find the place values of all these switches. So the place value for the first one is 1, so we put that over here. The place value for the third column of a binary number, that's the 2 to the second column. So if we follow that down and multiply it times 2 to the second, which is 4, we get a 4. Here's the 8th column, the 16th column. Here's the 32 column. This is 2 to the 5th. So we have 132, we have 1, 4, and we have 1, 1. So we add them all together. 1 plus 4 plus 2 is 7. And then 3 in the 10th column. So that number in binary is the exact same number as this in base 10. Notice in base 10 that it only takes two digits, where in binary it takes six. Humans don't respond very well to these kinds of numbers because it's really hard to tell how big that is. Some people think it's 100,101. It's not because the place values are different in base 2. So on the back part of your worksheet, uh, what I want to do is kind of see how well you're understanding what we talked about. We're going to ask ourselves some questions. And what I might do is I'll help you with a couple of them and then of each kind. And then you can do the other two. And we can see how well we understand. So here's a, an example of uh, a binary number. This is the last number on our worksheet on the front side. So what's the largest number you can represent if all you have is four switches? So if you have four switches and all four of them are on, so this switch is on, that's on, that's on, that's on, and you're using place value. So you have 1 plus 2 is 3, plus 4 is 7, plus 8 is 15. Well, what's the largest number that you can represent given a certain number of switches? So you say n, which is your number of switches or bits. If you have four bits, four binary digits, you say 2 to the 4th. Well, 2 to the 4th is 16. And then we subtract 1 from it, and we get 15. So we get 16 numbers. They're just numbered from 0 to 15 instead of 1 to 16. This is why programmers and a lot of computer people start counting at 0, because 0 is the first number. 1 is not the first number. It's the second number. What's the largest number you can represent with 2 bits? Well, you plug the 2 in where this n is located and say 2 squared, well, that's 4 minus 1 is 3. So the largest number you can represent in base 2 with just two switches is 3. Say you have 16 bits. Computers nowadays have 64 bits for their processor, like a Nintendo 64. That's what they're talking about is how big the, the processor is. Well, what's the biggest number a Nintendo 64 can store in its, in its processor? 
Well, you say 2 to the 64th minus 1. Is it big? Oh, super big. Yeah, so that's with 64 bits, you can show you can create some really humongous numbers. Okay, so it's a big number. So 16 bits, 32 bits. Have they come out with a 128 bit computer? I haven't heard of one yet, but someday. Notice 16 and 32 and 64 are all powers of 2. Why is that? Because the computer is a binary machine. This is what we need to recognize. We need to recognize that computers, regardless of brand or type, are binary machines. All the math done inside the computer is done in binary, not in base 10. Remember, binary is base 2. The computer converts the numbers into decimal only when it has to display the number on the screen or show the number on a printed report. But internally, inside the computer, you need to recognize it does all its math in base 2.